China is better than the USA. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. The U.S. empire uses freedom and democracy as a pretext to conquer and kill, in exactly the same way European colonialists used the pretext of spreading Christianity and civilization to save the godless savages. And it does so for the exact same reasons. Calling valid concerns Russian propaganda is propaganda. Biden is continuing Trump administration policies with China, Russia, Iran, Ukraine, Yemen, Venezuela, Cuba, Syria, North Korea, etc. The war machine always moves the same regardless of elections. How long before foreign leaders start asking to speak to America's real government? I am sure glad I don't live in China. I could never live somewhere people aren't allowed to think freely or live as individuals said everyone in the Western world simultaneously while staring at the screens which trained them to think that. China is better than the United States of America. Not because China is perfect, but because the U.S. is quantifiably the single most destructive and murderous government on this planet by an extremely massive margin. Is a tweet by Dr. Nafiz Ahmed. Exclusive, 20 years after 9-11, compelling statistical data suggests that the true death toll of the war on terror is a staggering 6 million people, which is likely a conservative estimate. I break down the data for byline times. Normal people. Seems like a bad idea to continually ramp up tensions between powerful nuclear-armed governments instead of working toward detente. Crazy person. So what you're saying is you love dictators and want them to kill babies and commit genocide. A multipolar world is far from ideal. It's just that accepting it would be a preferable alternative to the increasingly reckless brinkmanship the U.S. empire needs to exert against China, Russia, and Iran in its frantic attempts to secure unipolar domination. China is incredibly bad at international propaganda. Absolute dog shit. They're far worse at it than Russia, who is also really bad at it. Watching their international propaganda machine try to go up against Washington's is like watching a toddler try to fight a polar bear. The more frantic the U.S. empire gets to militarily encircle China, the more the Western public will be told about the importance of Taiwan's freedom and democracy. FYI, it's not okay to be a grown adult in 2022 and still believe the U.S. gives one single fuck about Taiwanese people. If I was Xi Jinping, I probably would not think it's a coincidence that the U.S. war machine is showing more and more military interest in so many areas surrounding China. As a report from CNN, the United States is to take part in a joint military exercise with India less than 100 kilometers from the South Asian country's disputed border with China. I always mentally translate the CCP to, you can stop reading here, I'm just blindly regurgitating empire propaganda. The party of the Chinese government is called the Communist Party of China the correct abbreviation for which is CPC. But there's no need to use that when the Chinese government, Beijing, or China would do just as well. The only reason to say CCP or Chinese Communist Party instead of the normal words people use for other governments would be if you wanted to delegitimize the government of China. Empire propaganda always works to change language to psychologically divorce an empire-targeted government from its nation and its people in the minds of its audience. That's why they say regime instead of government. They want to frame it as an alien occupying force people need liberating from. The same is true of CCP. For older people, it invokes the CCCP, which was the Russian abbreviation for the USSR, And for rightists, the use of Chinese Communist Party reminds them that they are talking about an ideology they despise. Everyone grows up hearing about China, but it was only when anti-China propaganda ramped up in 2019 that everyone started hearing CCP and Chinese Communist Party all the time. 
This makes it look like a strange alien thing laying on top of the China we all know and love, when really it's just China's government. Many Westerners have probably shared that you are not immune to propaganda meme without ever once contemplating the possibility that it might apply to their beliefs about China. The new formula is to deliberately stage aggressive provocations against disobedient governments, and then when they react to those provocations, have imperial spinmeisters stare with Bambi-eyed innocence and say, We did nothing wrong! No one is making them do this. Here's an example. Michael Schumann, he's an Atlantic Council guy. What's getting lost in the debate about Pelosi's Taiwan trip is that it's China's leaders who are shooting missiles around and destabilizing the region. No one is making them do this. It's their choice and it's not their only option. You see this no one made them do this line with both Ukraine and Taiwan. Like the fact that Moscow and Beijing weren't literally physically forced to respond exculpates the empire for its provocations. Like we're talking about Newtonian physics here and not human behavior. A lot of people spent two years screaming at me for focusing on U.S. brinkmanship with Russia and China, saying I should focus on COVID stuff instead. I don't expect an apology, but I hope those of you who did this can recognize now that I saw something very dangerous on the horizon that you had missed. Westerners think they are free because they can criticize their president or prime minister, when a small amount of research quickly reveals that those officials aren't the ones calling the shots on any issue of importance. Westerners aren't even allowed to know who their real government is. People who spend their entire lives working, shopping, consuming, reading, viewing, voting, behaving, speaking, and thinking exactly as the powerful want them to, sometimes voice concerns that their society might be in danger of someday slipping into a totalitarian dystopia. If you spend a lot of time worrying that we are sliding into dystopia, it's because you haven't looked closely enough at our present situation. If you think we're not yet in one, tell me what it is the powerful want but don't yet have. An entire civilization dedicated to profiting them and serving their interests? Ownership of all political parties? Collective mind control? They have all those things. The uncomfortable reality is that our entire civilization is set up to benefit a few powerful people, and we think it's normal because we have been conditioned to think that. We are trained monkeys, dancing their owner's dance, while telling each other fairy tales about being free. <laughs>